I feel like hmm. I'm going to try not to cry. I know. I know. <laughs> this is a tough one. So today is sad. Today's a sad day. Today is, yeah. It might sound like I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> so I said earlier this week on Twitter that we're going to do a happy movie and a sad movie. And I today, saw that. <laughs> today is a sad movie. It is, yeah. You know, but it was a, it was, it's good, though. As you may know, today is March 11th. Uh, which, and it's 2021, which means it's the 10th anniversary of one of the worst natural disasters. I think the cost for it was over 300 billion US dollars. That's like not a real number. I know. <laughs> so back in 2011, uh, <laughs> there was an earthquake, a tsunami, and a nuclear reactor meltdown all in the same day. <laughs> yeah, the earthquake was... Uh... I kept seeing 9.0 magnitude. I, I don't know if it was if it actually reached that high. It might have been like an 8.9. Or, mm-hmm. I don't actually know. I kept seeing 9.0. Yeah. Though. Like, yeah. That, I mean, it was huge. It, it caught. It happened around 15 miles offshore um, near right. Sendai. Mm-hmm. It, it happened in in the ocean, um, so the tectonic plates shifted and caused a, a change in water, which created a huge tsunami. Um, right. But the the earthquake itself caused like a chain reaction, like the tsunami caused damage, but that was caused by the earthquake. Mm-hmm. But then the earthquake also caused problems in Fukushima, which is mm-hmm. where the, the nuclear power plant was located. Right. It still is. It's still technically there. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just like a lot of really bad stuff all at once. But mm. it's crazy because I mean I don't know if we really discussed this in our episode on wood job, but. <laughs> which is like a weird movie to bring up um but we talked about like the forestry service uh with woodjob and and in the past century i think or like around about the past century japan has really like gotten strict about the way their buildings are constructed uh, um, I and i bring up woodjob because like it's something about like the kind of wood that is allowed to be used in construction mm. of buildings and things like that okay. so basically it's it's thought that because japan was so well prepared Right. For an earthquake of that magnitude, in the sense of their architecture, a lot of buildings are still standing. Oh, like, I mean, all of, like, Tokyo is, like, still right. standing because the buildings are designed to withstand that. That does not oh, in any way negate the horrible destruction that was yeah. caused. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I think they think it could have been worse. That is something that comes up. The, the dichotomy between the people who are close to the epicenter and the yeah. people around Fukushima yeah. versus... The people who lived even less than 100 miles away mm-hmm. and were almost unaffected. Mm-hmm. Uh, that comes up in the subject <laughs> at long last. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not I, at all. I've, I've read a lot about this, mm-hmm. so I, I can get long-winded. Today, I, I only have one arm right now because <laughs> there's a cat laying on me. <laughs> but we're talking about the 2012 film, uh, Friends After 311, mm-hmm. which is documentary we've wanted to cover for a while um but having actually watched it i'm not sure how to how we would cover it in like an analytical sense other than i I think other than bringing to light information about that disaster and Mm -hmm. using the the documentary as a springboard for that but i feel like there's a lot of information available. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are even just documentaries on YouTube. Right, like, right. And lots of books and things like that. So I I figured it would probably be better if we just kind of talked about it. Cause yeah. Because basically this documentary, it's a 2012 documentary. It was filmed less than a year after all of that happened. Uh, it's by Shunji Iwai, <clears throat> the director of Bride for a Fan Winkle, All About Lily Shushu, Swallowtail. And it was in this period where he wasn't doing like narrative filmmaking necessarily. Mm-hmm. I think this was the second documentary that he had done. Because I think he did one in 2006 as well. But he and this other filmmaker got together, just interviewed a bunch of different people from a bunch of different walks of life mm-hmm. about it. And after watching it, I feel like it's a really important movie because it's a time capsule of yeah. what was going on within the year after. But I feel like it's also a really important movie because... There were a lot of things that came up that it was like, this sounds like they could be talking about 2020. It was weird. Yeah. It was very strange. It was weird watching it, like, in the midst of a global pandemic. Mm-hmm. Like, and just kind of finding those comparisons. Mm-hmm. 
I, I agree that this is a really good time capsule. And it, it was really strange to like make those comparisons of like, oh, that's kind of poignant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I will, I guess like as an overall like thought on this, it's, I think it does exactly what a documentary should do. Yes. Uh, it gives you enough information to make you want to learn more. I, I don't really know much about the um, the nuclear disaster mm -hmm. that happened, mm -hmm. so that's something like I was learning more about, right? Um, in watching the movie and and learning more about what they were discussing in the movie mm -hmm. made me want to look into the disaster more. I see. Yeah. Because um, you knew some about the tsunami previously. Yeah, I knew a lot about the yeah, tsunami. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I've read books about it and mm -hmm. stuff like that because I don't know why. I just, like, it, <laughs> I was just drawn to learning about that. When I was that age, I didn't have access to internet. I didn't know about this. Right. Like, I didn't know that it was happening. So I didn't learn until a lot later. And I kind mm -hmm. of, I guess, a sense of remorse of my lack of awareness. Yeah. Um, so I kind of took it upon myself to learn more. I knew about it at the time because I was already in college and I was in, I was studying Japanese. Yeah, yeah, so, so of course that. we knew about it, like, because of did, that. Did you all, like, discuss it in class? <sighs> Not really. Like, a little bit. But even then, mm -hmm. it was, like, kind of, it was almost, like, peripheral. Like, I was aware of it, but yeah. it wasn't. I know when we, like, later, much, much later, like, not last year, of course, but the year before, Mm -hmm. In 2019, I think, on the anniversary when we went to, because we're taking Japanese classes, oh, um, yeah. we we talked about it then mm -hmm. in our Jap in our adult Japanese class. Yeah, I I think this documentary is a really good entry point mm -hmm. for like if you don't know that much about it, or like mm -hmm. you like are like oh yeah, that's a thing that happened 10 years ago. Yeah, but you haven't like really looked into it. There's a lot to learn. It's like really sad. Mm -hmm. I, when we started this video, I was like, I'm gonna try not to cry. And actually, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's sad to talk about, but I've also read a lot, a lot about citizens have like decided to rebuild some areas and just things like that. Yeah. So it's good. I know, Since like, then. even, yeah. yeah. I know, even like some people here on YouTube, like abroad in Japan, mm -hmm. talked about it. And mm -hmm. like, he talked about the like woman who rebuilt their bed and breakfast, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. We're talking about a movie. The movie is good. Well, it talks about the earthquake mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just talk about either the nuclear meltdown or the way the earthquake impacted Tokyo right. or um, the tsunami and how it affected all the coastal towns that it affected. It discusses all of those by having conversations with people mm -hmm. who experienced the broad range of mm -hmm. what occurred on March 11th. Yeah. I really liked that about it. Yeah. Because when we first started it, I was like, oh, this is just about the Fukushima. Nuclear meltdown. Yeah. yeah. Which was fine. I, I didn't know about a lot about that. I'm glad that it was like a, a more like broad perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This isn't really a spoiler, but towards the end of the movie, they go to one of the areas that was directly affected by the tsunami, one of the coastal towns. Mm. They're talking about how like all of this wreckage and all of these buildings are probably going to be torn down. They're probably going to be gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's kind of emblematic of what this entire movie is because... It's it's recording all of it. I, I this is basically just what I said before, but it's recording all of it like right after it happened. Essentially, it's not just recording the landscape, like what it looked like or anything, mm -hmm. but it's also recording all of these different people's reactions at the time, like yeah. politicians and uh, professors. And there was one guy who he I don't remember what his position was, but he worked for this bank that had decided to come out and say we're no longer using nuclear power mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just uh, all these all these different people which also one of the reasons that I even found out about this movie in the first place mm -hmm. for anybody who is a fan of Battle Royale this might interest you because the guy uh, who played one of the two older guys in Battle Royale uh, the not insane one <laughs> that the, mm -hmm. who voluntarily came and played the game again um, his actor, uh, Taro Yamamoto, 
when March 11th happened, he was very outspoken against mm-hmm. ever using nuclear power ever again. And his acting agency dropped him immediately, and he essentially got blacklisted from acting. And so he moved on to being a politician. And this film captures that moment where he's making the transition from one to the other, mm-hmm. which was, like, super interesting, in my opinion. Yeah. It just as, like, a again, I like, think, as a side... I think specifically for viewers of the show, like, that's mm-hmm. probably, like, going to be one of the more interesting mm-hmm. aspects of it. Like, if you're not necessarily as involved with like learning about the natural disaster right. itself like there is discussion of an actor who mm-hmm. like yeah just the way that like the way his company responded to his response to a natural <laughs> disaster it's it, it it definitely i definitely think it has a bias <laughs> mm-hmm. and a and a leaning um oh definitely uh so you know take that however you feel is appropriate mm-hmm. but I, again, I think this this is a really good starting point and like a, a jumping board for having discussions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, it's it's a springboard for learning more. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was shot really well. And yes. It's very I really pretty. liked the sequence when they're in Tokyo and they're following the guy around who's like. The like band. Yeah. Yeah. And then they like go up to the the policeman. The police. That was just funny. They're I, like, what did they say? Like, sorry for making noise. We're protesting nuclear power. Yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, it, I I think it was well crafted in the mm-hmm. sense that it's like there's like moments of levity like that definitely all throughout. So it's not just like a cry fest, but it's also not just it's, like it's the mostly. same exact thing over and over. It's <laughs> it's tough. But no, you're right. It's, I mean, it's not the same thing over and over again. And they t- they they talked to quite a few different people, Mm -hmm. like, in all, like, walks of life. If anybody is interested in this film, uh, I will, uh, obviously there will be a link in the description um, to where you can find it, but unlike a lot of Japanese films that we talk about that might be a little bit more obscure in English-speaking countries on this channel, this one actually was released on, like, a Region Zero DVD with English subtitles included, Mm -hmm. so there's just a single Japanese release of it that is essentially available to anybody who speaks English Mm -hmm. and has something that can play a DVD player because the the region isn't locked on it. Yeah. So. It's good. Yeah. It's it's well worth the watch. You know, it's been 10 years, but there, and like people have rebuilt a lot of stuff, but we found some resources that if you're interested in helping survivors still, we've linked them in the description and you can check those out and see which best match your interests if you want to help out. Because it was a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it still is. There's, still, yeah. They're still cleaning up, and there are people who are still, like, affected to it. They will be for the rest of their lives, mm-hmm. so. Definitely. So, yeah, it's, I feel like it's an important day and one that shouldn't be forgotten. And I think this um, mm-hmm. documentary is a good, like, time capsule for that, like you said. Definitely. So, check out all, the, all those links in the description if you want to check out the film or if you want to find out any more information about uh, March 11th, or if you want to help out in any way, possibly. All that will be down there in the description, and a little more so mellow than normal a today. A sad. Because it's sad. Yeah, it's, it's hard to talk about this kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. I think it's important to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I think Chester has been very happy, though. Yeah, at, oh, I don't know if he's in the shot, but... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show... I'll show everyone... Look at this. This will be our outro. Just there he is. Here he is. He's um, my leg has fallen asleep. Uh, my arm is in the process of falling asleep. <laughs> oh. But he is wide awake. But he looks so cute. Are you long cat? Yeah. You weren't even born then. You know. You were not even a fetus. <laughs> nope. You weren't even a thing. But you're a thing now and we love you. Whoa. <laughs> All right. That's good. Thanks, baby.